The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. Everyone is always on the search for the best diet for this or the best diet for that, or even more specifically, the best individual food to heal a particular ailment. But what if the best food for almost all healing was no food at all? Fasting holds the promise for prevention and treatment of major diseases such as cancer, autoimmune conditions, digestive disorders, and more, all according to a new book by Dr. David Jockers, and he's about to give you a health awakening. And welcome to The Health Awakening. I'm your host, Scott Laird. What if I told you that the best strategy to balancing your hormones, burning fat, taking control of blood sugar, and even conditioning your body to heal itself of the world's most feared diseases would cost you absolutely nothing? And what if you could do it right now without any equipment or special foods? Well, Dr. David Jockers reveals a secret in his new book called The Fasting Transformation, a functional guide to burn fat, heal your body, and transform your life with intermittent and extended fasting. He is a best-selling author, a world-renowned expert in the area of ketosis, fasting, and functional nutrition, and a personal friend of mine. Dr. Jockers, welcome to The Health Awakening. Well, thanks so much, Scott. Always an honor and a privilege to be on your show, and uh, I always enjoy our discussions. You know, I'm very excited about your new book because I've just gone into the world of uh, a world of uh, intermittent fasting myself. My wife has done it for a while. She finally got me on board. I've been a vegan for many years, and now I'm beginning to learn things that, wow, maybe we're kind of mistaken about a few things regarding carbohydrates. And, you know, not to throw out the baby with the bathwater, but there is something to be learned about carbohydrates. So we're going to get into that in just a second here, but are, are we just eating too much in today's society? Is that where we're at? I mean, what, what's so transformational about fasting? Yeah, well, fasting is really part of our, our ancient blueprint. See, our ancestors didn't have refrigerators and pantries. So, you know, basically they when food was abundant, they ate a lot and uh, they didn't have short shelf life. So there were a lot of times of famine when they didn't have access to food. And you can even see it built into many different cultures. Many cultures have fasting periods just built in. They do it for spiritual reasons. They do it for cultural re reasons. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, many ancestors just did it because food wasn't available. So it's something that's built into our blueprint and our DNA really responds well to times when food is abundant, but also times when food is scarce and we're, we're eating very little and actually cycling through that cycling through both of those actually really our body really responds well from a hormonal perspective from an immune perspective keeping inflammation under control and really from a self-healing perspective we respond extremely well to these kinds of cyclical eating patterns so cyclical there's the the idea right there i think so this is not about starvation or anorexia or something like this this is intentional fasting on a schedule is that right yeah, for sure. So in our society today, I mean, we can be we can eat all day. We've got we've got an abundance of food around us all the time. But that's again not really built into our our, our genetic blueprint to to have those types of, of you know food abundance at all times. So we have to actually ha take an intentional approach. And by going for a period of time without food, we actually turn on you know basically our self healing mechanisms and we activate certain genes that have to do with cleansing, healing, detoxifying. And, uh, you know, it's so powerful for the body. And so I always talk about how, you know, from the time you begin, so like your first meal of the day to your last meal, we call that the building stage, right? So when you eat your first bite of food uh, during the day and then until your last bite of food uh, during the course of a day, that's your building stage. That's, you know, basically you're activating hormones that are involved with building cell, cell division, basically burning sugar as our main fuel source and, and storing fat. And the time between our last meal of the day and our first meal the following day is actually our fasting or cleansing stage. And that is when we're actually activating hormones that have to do with burning fat for fuel. 
that have to do with breaking down damaged cells, recycling the components, and turning them into new, healthier uh, cells and cellular components. So this is almost like our, our bodies are sort of built like uh, something we've seen just recently, recently in the last few years, and that is a, a hybrid car. So you've got a gasoline source and an electric source, and I actually have a, a Prius myself. So I know that you know in, in at certain times one will turn on and one will turn off. So what happens if we're only using sugar for fuel? I mean, if we never burn fat for fuel, what's the problem with that? Yeah, so sugar is a a great fuel source from the perspective that we can use it when we don't have the presence of oxygen. So in our body, we're primarily going to use sugar and fat as our energy sources, right? Sugar, we can use as an energy source when we don't have the presence of oxygen, like when we're exercising at a high intensity. However, burning sugar is actually a dirty fuel because when we burn it, we produce a lot of metabolic waste, a lot of free radicals, and we produce very little energy. So it's like a car that gets very poor gas mileage and produces a lot of carbon emissions, okay? As opposed to burning fat. When we burn fat, we produce a lot of energy and very little metabolic waste. So there's a great advantage there. However, again, we have to have the presence of oxygen. So we have to be in a state where we're consuming enough oxygen in order to break down the fat and utilize it as an energy source. So we, you know, we want to be good at burning both fuel sources for energy, but we want to be really good at burning fat when we're at rest, which is most of the day. Most of the day, we're not out of breath, right? And we want to be good at burning fat. What happens is when we're constantly eating and snacking throughout the day, particularly on foods that are higher in carbohydrates, we actually train our body by producing certain hormones like the hormone insulin to burn sugar as our main fuel source and to store fat. And we become very, very poor at burning fat for fuel when we become reliant on burning sugar. And that actually ages us faster. We create more oxidation within our bodies. So we accelerate the aging process. We damage all of our cells, tissues, and organs, and uh, we promote the development of chronic disease. Okay, well, we're talking about dietary cycling, specifically the fasting transformation, a new book by Dr. David Jockers. We'll be right back with more with The Health Awakening. Scholars have uncovered more than 5,000 handwritten Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, but not one of them is the same. How did the Bible change so much, and who did it? So many people trying to twist history or twist the words of Scripture to sell their narrative. That's really one of the most important things you have to learn. What's the agenda behind this change? What's the agenda behind this insertion? Twisting the Word with biblical linguist Miles Jones exposes the politics, power, and compromise that have twisted the Word of the Almighty over the centuries. But the only way to watch it is to receive it as our gift. Donate a $50 love gift and we'll send you Twisting the Word with Miles Jones on DVD or Blu-ray. Or for a donation of $100, we'll send you Twisting the Word, plus an ancient replica oil lamp featuring the Lion of Judah, plus burning oil and wicks. Or as a special offer for a donation of $300, we'll send you Twisting the Word, the ancient replica oil lamp, and this beautiful set of salt and pepper shakers made in Israel. Exquisitely crafted in the shape of pomegranates, these unique conversation pieces are made of copper and come with a silver-plated tray. These are special gifts from Michael Root to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Remember, this offer ends May 31st and supplies are limited. Call now to receive your gifts 888-766-3610. That's 888-766-3610. Or get your gifts online at monthlylovegift.com. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking with our guest, Dr. David Jockers, about the fasting transformation and how the body can kind of get lazy and start burning the wrong type of fuel and burn a dirty fuel, which means uh, not very good things for our health. So, Dr. David Jockers, let's talk more about that. Let's talk about the mechanism by which fasting causes the body to, to heal itself. I mean, if we're, we're, we're always doing the same thing, uh, it's almost like making the body lazy. So what does fasting do to, to correct that? 
Yeah, so when we fast, we suppress insulin. So now insulin goes down in our bloodstream. When insulin goes down, it actually turns on certain pathways in our body that have to do with healing and basically recycling damaged components of the body. And we have, a, we have this word called autophagy, which means basically self-eating. And there was a Japanese researcher that actually won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016 for his award-winning research on this mechanism of autophagy. But basically what happens here is throughout the process of metabolism, like when we're burning sugar for fuel and even when we're burning fat, we're producing oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is like rusting on metal, right? So this oxidative stress starts to rust the components of the cell. In particular, we have one component called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is where we produce the energy within our cells. And the mitochondria becomes damaged. It's very susceptible to damage from oxidation. So over time, these mitochondria within our cells become damaged. The higher amount of mitochondria and the, the healthier the mitochondria are in your cell, the more energy the cell is able to, to, to produce and the more stress resilient your cell is. So autophagy, when we have suppressed insulin, because we're fasting, now the body starts to go in, it breaks down the mitochondria, takes the components, which mitochondria is mostly made out of amino acids and proteins, takes those components and actually recycles them and produces new, healthy, stronger and stress, more stress resilient mitochondria. So again, it's recycling it. It's like trading in your old car for a new car, right? So you're actually getting better performance that way. And this is a built-in system of the body. Also, there are some cells that their components are so damaged that it would take too much energy to recycle them. So the body then will actually just get rid of them. It'll actually destroy those cells and create new healthy stem cells. And stem cells are these really young, strong embryonic cells that um, you know have not been damaged by oxidation. And so these cells are very, very stress resilient. And ultimately, our level of resilience or our level of health is going to be based around the amount of stress resilient, strong, young, stress resilient cells and strong, young, stress resilient mitochondria that we have in our body. And fasting is a natural way that we actually upregulate those processes on a daily basis, right? So we're regenerating our system, renewing our body on a regular basis when we practice some sort of an intermittent fasting lifestyle. Now, a key word you had in there was stem cells. Now, a lot of people will be going, wait a minute, stem cells? I thought the only way you could do that is having them injected in a clinical setting. So are you telling us that you can actually regenerate your own stem cells through fasting? So everybody is constantly sort of found to do, you know, anti-aging therapy that people are looking at. There's a lot of research going on there, but you're always producing new stem cells and stem cells are to your advantage. Again, they're younger, stronger, more stress resilient cells. And you want to do things naturally that are going to allow your body to produce these endogenously. That means producing them within rather than injecting them from without, right? Obviously it's a very expensive therapy. It's not for everybody doing stem cell therapy, but what is for everybody is doing things, living a certain lifestyle that activates your body's own innate stem cell development. That's only gonna optimize your overall health. Now, I know there's several different keto diet styles. Uh, and of course, uh, the reason I re mentioned keto is because intermittent fasting is quite often paired with, uh, with, with a keto lifestyle. So when someone is doing an intermittent fast, let's say just eating from noon till 8 p.m. and not eating the rest of the day, what is the cleanest form of fuel that they can be eating between 12 and 8? What's the cleanest keto, so to speak? Yeah, well, there is a lot of similarity between fasting and keto because when our body start, when insulin goes down, and we need a fuel source, the body starts breaking down fat. And the difference, so what happens here is fatty acids, most of our cells can use fatty acids as an energy source, but our brain, our neurons can't. We actually have a blood brain barrier that pr protects against large molecules getting into the brain like long chain fats. And so that's where the liver actually takes fats, converts them into a water soluble, smaller molecule called ketones. And when ketones are able to slip into the blood brain barrier and be an amazing fuel source for your brain. So if you've ever gone, you know, four hours, five hours without a meal, and then all of a sudden you felt anxious, irritable, hungry, you had cravings, you felt nauseous, um, you had a headache. Those are all signs of what we call reactive hypoglycemia. And that's what happens when the brain is not getting fuel. 
And this is a really unwanted thing. And this is why a lot of people will say, well, you need to eat every few hours so you don't experience that. However, when your body is metabolically flexible, and that means you're good at switching between burning sugar and burning fat, and you're able to produce these ketones and get them up in the brain, you don't feel that way. In fact, you can fast a long period of time and actually feel great. You can fast for 14, 16, 18 hours, 24 hours, and actually feel really good and, and do your most productive work during that period because your body's running off these ketones. The brain loves to use ketones as a fuel source. So that's really a similarity. And, and a ketogenic diet is a diet that keeps your insulin down. So fasting just by not eating, you keep your insulin down. However, there are certain foods you can eat that will minimize the increase in insulin, right? Like healthy fats, for example, things like avocados, olives, olive oil. Um, if you eat animal pro uh, products, grass-fed butter is a great one. Eggs are a great source of healthy fats, coconut oil, uh, coconut products. These sorts of healthy fats are, uh, you know, they're very um, low insulogenic, meaning that your body produces very little to no insulin when you're consuming those types of foods. And so we try to keep the carbohydrate levels down to keep insulin overall as a, as a whole down. All right. Now, speaking of hormone balance, there are different levels of fasting, and we're going to get into that next with our guest, Dr. David Jockers, talking about his new book called The Fasting Transformation. Stay with us. The Chronological Gospels Bible is changing lives all over the world, putting everything the Messiah did in exact chronological order and explaining the behind the scenes truth of what the Messiah did, when he did it, and why. The timing of it all means everything. And now, the Chronological Gospels can be easier on your eyes. The larger print edition features 40% larger type and every page appears exactly the same as the original, so you can follow along with others who have the regular size version. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition also has wider margins to write notes, and the premium quality paper means you can highlight without soaking through. Plus, the Larger Print Edition lies flat, so you can teach without having to hold the book open. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition is a big and beautiful coffee table book, measuring a full 12 inches tall and 9 inches wide. Study the Bible with clarity and ease. I love the size of this book. This is 9 by 12. The paper is, is perfect because it doesn't bleed through when I write on it. I can mark it up, and I always make notes in all my Bibles. Everything is the same place as it is on the smaller version, and I can just stand back and I can teach from it, and it's just, it's the perfect size. I pray thee, of whom speaks this prophet? Order the Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition by phone or online. You'll get 40% larger type than the original. Call 800-788-7887. That's 800-788-7887 or get the Chronological Gospels Bible Larger Print Edition online at arudawakening.tv slash large. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, we were talking with our guest, Dr. David Jockers, about different levels of fasting. Let's get into that. So, Dr. David, uh, I myself am doing an intermittent fast uh, coupled with a keto diet, something new I've been doing. I used to be on a vegan diet, but I'm finding this one adapts to me quite well. So, But what I'm doing is just a beginner's level. So intermittent fasting, uh, that in itself has many different levels, but uh, where do we go from there? Yeah, for sure. So intermittent fasting is going to be basically what well, it's another term for it is time restricted feeding. So we're kind of condensing our eating window into a certain period of time throughout the day. So it might be like an eight hour window. Like you talked about, you're eating your first meal at 12 PM. You're eating your last meal at 8 PM, for example. So you would fast then from 8 PM to 12. That's a 16 hour fast. And there are different variations of that. I always recommend somebody starting with 12 hours over at, like an overnight fast where you finish your last meal at let's say 7 PM. And you don't eat, you don't eat anything with calories until 7 AM the next morning. Now you can drink water. You can drink herbal tea, non-caloric beverages, 
that's fine, but you're not consuming food with calories um, you know, during that 12 hour window. And that's a great place to start. And then you start your day by hydrating your body. And when you hydrate well, you suppress hunger hormones. And that's actually gonna help you be able to extend that fast a little bit longer, 14 hours, 16 hours, maybe 18 hours. Right? And ultimately, I love to see people being able to get to where they're able to do something like a 20 to 24 hour fast one day a week, okay? Where it's almost like a one day fast, like a one meal a day, one time a week fast. And that's a really great test of metabolic flexibility where your body's really good at burning its own body fat for fuel. You get high levels of autophagy and self cell healing when you're able to do that. So that's amazing. Now, there are other strategies as well. You can do an extended fast. For some people, they do amazing. They do a five or seven day water fast, for example. And you can get tremendous amounts of healing, cell repair, high, high, super high levels of autophagy and um, stem cell development by doing that, okay? So certain people are able to get amazing benefits from that. Um, but, you know, we don't start there because just kind of like exercise, we don't want to start with a marathon, right? We want to start with, you know, maybe walking to your mailbox, right? So we want to start small and kind of lean into some of these things. Now, there's another strategy you can do with an extended fast where it's a partial fast, where you do something like a bone broth fast or a juice, green juice fast, for example. You probably heard of people doing that. They do three to five days only drinking bone broth or only drinking green juice. And this is where you're basically consuming a low Lower amount of calories and usually in like a pre-digested form that's really easy on your gut. Um, and so you're still getting some calories in, but typically significantly less than what you would normally consume. So usually, you know, to really get the benefits, the best benefits from partial fasting, it's usually less than 40% of your normal caloric load. Most men have no problem going into a 16 or even an 18 hour fast. And typically within a week, they see they feel amazing and it becomes a lot easier for them to do. Women have a different hormonal mix and especially menstruating females. And so what we often will do, and especially if they're very lean, if they're low in body fat, it sends signals to the brain that says, hey, you know, we don't have enough, enough body fat here. We're not going to be able to carry out a birth. And so therefore it can shut down metabolism, shut down sex hormone production. There can be a lot of problems. So what I'll often do is we'll get them really mastering a 12 to 14 hour fast overnight. And then we'll bump it up to the 16 hours. Around that 16 hour mark, you start really seeing an increase in autophagy, right? And we wanted to get some of those benefits. However, for the, these types of individuals, doing it every single day may not be warranted, right? It may actually be counterproductive. So oftentimes we'll do it two or three times a week on non-consecutive days, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or a Monday, Friday. So you're still getting benefits, the self-healing benefits. You're bringing down insulin, you're improving your insulin sensitivity, stimulating fat burning, all these amazing benefits of fasting, but you're not overwhelming your system because fasting, as great as it is, it's what we call a hormetic stress. And that means a stressor on the body that actually has great health benefits. But nonetheless, it's a stressor. And if your body's already overwhelmed by stress and it's very sensitive to stress, we need a lower dose, kind of like exercise. Some people can exercise at a high intensity every single day and do great. Other people, they can't do that. If they do that, they're not gonna sleep well, they're gonna feel terrible, they're gonna overtrain. Well, it's kind of like that with fasting. We gotta figure out exactly the, the, the right fasting strategy for each person. But you know, that's really what I go through in the books, how to help customize that, figure out you know, what, what kind of signals your body's giving you to help you understand if you're on the right track with your fasting plan or if you need to back off a little bit. Okay, now speaking of everybody's a little bit different, some folks are dealing with some pretty serious stuff and we're gonna deal with that next. We're talking with Dr. David Jockers about his new book called The Fasting Transformation. Stay with us, we'll be right back with more from The Health Awakening. Scholars have uncovered more than 5,000 handwritten Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, but not one of them is the same. So many people trying to twist history or twist the words of scripture to sell their narrative. That's really one of the most important things you have to learn. What's the agenda behind this change? What's the agenda behind this insertion? Twisting the Word with biblical linguist Miles Jones exposes the underhanded history of changing God's Word. But the only way to watch it is to receive it as our gift. Donate a $50 love gift and we'll send you Twisting the Word on DVD or Blu-ray. Or donate $100 to receive the teaching plus an ancient replica oil lamp featuring the Lion of Judah. 
or donate $300 to receive everything, plus a beautiful set of salt and pepper shakers made of copper and silver in Israel. Hurry, offer ends May 31st. Call the number on your screen or get your gifts online at monthlylovegift.com. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. We've been talking with our guest, Dr. David Jockers, with the, about his new book called The Fasting Transformation. And Dr. David, something we want to talk about is cancer. I've seen people heal themselves of cancer with a, a plant-based diet and lots of juicing, but there's more than one way to heal something like this. And apparently fasting can be that too. So how do we do this? Yeah, fasting is so so powerful for cancer. So we know that cancer is, most cancers are a metabolic disease. Basically, they're characterized by high insulin. In fact, your average cancer cell has 20 to 40 times more insulin receptors than a normal cell. So they're gobbling up insulin, they're gobbling up sugar. So they are um, obligate anaerobic organisms, meaning that, or basically these cells are constantly being driven by a low oxygen environment, as well as um, burning sugar for fuel. And so by with fasting, what it does is it helps to reduce the overall amount of blood sugar and insulin. And now the cancer cells become starving and hungrier. And, you know, you can even bring in conventional therapies like chemotherapy, or you can bring in some sort of an oxidative stress from a natural perspective, like, uh, like hyperbaric oxygen or ozone or IV vitamin C, which those types of things on the, from the natural perspective are really strengthening for healthy cells, but toxic for cancer cells. And so fasting actually helps create an environment that allows whatever sort of oxidative therapy that we use to really um, concentrate and kill cancer cells at a higher level and preserve the health of our normal cells. So, so by doing that, it minimizes the side effects. It's an amazing truth. And folks, if you want to know more, get the book. We're out of time. Dr. David Jockers, how do we get your brand new book, The Fasting Transformation? Yeah, you can find it on Amazon, The Fasting Transformation. You can also find it on my website, drjockers.com. All right, thanks very much. Well, thank you for joining us for The Health Awakening. Our guest has been Dr. David Jockers. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. You can catch the replay of this episode and see our complete show archive at healthawakening.tv. For more information about our guests today and all they have to offer, please visit their website on the bottom of your screen. And please remember, the information you saw today is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice, nor do the views expressed reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result.